Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. You guys have been asking us to do a RAID Zero NVMe Gen 4 setup for ages. So I decided it was time to hit up some Brent so we could get some drives so we could test it out. So I sent them a message, they were like, yeah, we'll ship you some drives and we put a RAID Zero together. And that's basically what we're gonna do in this video, one of our regular storage videos, to see how fast we can go with RAID Zero with PCIe Gen 4. So without further ado, let's roll that intro. The reason why I wanted to do this was because I wanted to see how fast we could go if we were to do an off-the-shelf solution ourselves. So what I decided to do was use the ASRock Hyper M.2 card and use AMD's RAID Expert in the BIOS with a Threadripper setup to get this to work because there's no real way to do this quickly and easily any other way than doing it in the BIOS. Now it can be quite a tricky setup if you've never done this before and this video is, is purely for demonstration purposes only. It's not really supposed to be like the right way to set this up or the easiest way. This is just how we got it to work. Now, this is not a how-to guide either. I'm basically just gonna share the data that we collected from running all these tests with this drive setup that we did. And spoiler alert, it's absolutely ridiculously fast how this thing goes. The way this works is I use the TRX40 Tai Chi from ASRock. I put the 3970X on it. It's the 32 core Threadripper. And I use the add-in card that comes with the motherboard to do this. Now, I did test this on my editing PC as well, which uses a Gigabyte board. It can work, but the way that the RAID driver works is it the, the best way to install it is in the pre-installation environment, which means you load the drivers in a, in a series through the Windows installation. You actually need to load three drivers in in a specific order for this to work properly. You can install the package like after the fact, like after you've installed Windows to add this later, but most of the time it doesn't really work correctly. So if you were to do a setup like this with RAID 0 or even RAID 1 with one of these cards with Gen 4 drives, or just in general with one of these M.2 enclosures, I would suggest installing the drivers before you install Windows. It will just make your life a whole lot easier and you'll have less headaches. Now, we actually went through this before when we built our Threadripper server. We uh, figured this out like almost two years ago. So yeah, uh, that's just what I would recommend doing. Anyway, let's uh, show you how I actually put this together. It's pretty straightforward. I use four one terabytes of Brent rocket drives. I put them on the add-in card. It's basically just four M.2 slots. Now, the way you actually go about this in the BIOS is a little bit different. You have to activate the RAID Expert setting, which actually enables RAID in the BIOS for these Threadripper boards. You can do this on X570. If you were to do this headless mode with no GPU, or if you had an APU that supported Gen 4, you could actually get this to work, but I would suggest doing this with Threadripper. There's no Gen 4 motherboards for Intel, so it's not possible to do this with Intel at these speeds at this point in time when this video comes out. So basically the way you go about this is you have to set up the slot that you have the card plugged into into bifurcation mode. So you have to go by four by four by four by four. So it splits it out into four PCIe devices. So you can actually set up the RAID array. It's, it's a little bit confusing if you've never done this before. The reason why they have settings like this in the BIOS is for setups like this. And for small form factor systems, we can actually split a by 16 slot into like two separate slots with some riser cables. So if you wanted to do dual GPUs or you wanted to do, let's say you had an ITX board and you had a bigger case and you wanted to do a GPU and a capture card, you could do that as well. So yeah, that's why these setups really exist and that's why, yeah, it just exists. But anyway, so we have to use this to get this to work. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's look at the results here. And uh, spoiler alert, like I said before, this thing performs, it's, it's really, really good. But yeah, let's uh, have a look at all the numbers. First off, I just wanted to mention that if the graphs are moving too fast, you have this magical little button down the bottom called the pause button. You can pause it on any of these graphs to see any information you want. What these benchmarks are telling us is that the Sabrent Rocket Gen 4 drive in this four terabyte configuration with this card in RAID 0 has really strong sequential read and write performance. 
Where the drive starts to fall apart is with the random read and write because of the way it queues up the data. There's no actual real cache here. There's nothing to tell the data to either slow down or speed up. It's just using straight up PCIe. Now this is where you'll see that Aorus PCIe 3.0 storage card really start to beat it in those random operations because it has a physical controller that is designed to handle these types of read and write workloads. Nonetheless, the performance of this setup is actually still quite impressive. Now for accessing files over a network, this would actually work quite well. As for loading games, it might not actually be faster. However, it all depends on the type of workload as I mentioned. If you're benchmarking drives just to find out what the fastest drive in the world is, the sequential speeds are what are going to give you those massive numbers. But realistically, you're looking at that random read and write performance, and although it's not great, it is still quite acceptable with this type of setup. I would like to actually get a proper RAID card with a proper controller to try this out properly, but for now, this is all we've got to test this out with. If you're wondering why we chose these drives to compare it to, these are basically the drives that we've been collecting data with from our database over the last few months. There's no rhyme or reason to it. They're basically just there to give you an understanding of how the drives perform because it's a good sample of different drives based on varying amounts of cache, uh, different capacities, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, uh, try not to get too twisted on why the drives are there and being compared. They're just there because we have that data. If there isn't any data for a certain drive and you've never seen us cover that type of drive before, that's because we don't have one or we've never had one, so we can't actually provide that information to you. But again, I think this is actually quite a good sample of drives and and this data from this Sabrent setup is actually showing us what could be possible if you had a proper RAID controller on a card itself. So I'll, I'll just rewind just to summarize this for you. The sequential read and write numbers are pretty impressive. Again, the random read and write is where it begins to fall apart. But I think this is a nice experiment. It's a nice thing for us to collect data on so we know what we can work on next. Now this video is kind of just meant to be like a, like a look at this. It's not really meant to be investigating on how to build something like this, but if you were wanting to do something like this, it is very easy to do. However, it can be very, very expensive to do because you need to get the actual card to do it. You'll need four drives and it will take time as well. So there is a bit of time investment. Now, who would be someone that would want to use something like this? Uh, me personally, I'd like to use something like this as a scratch disk for editing. Uh, there is a few use cases when I'm speeding up footage, having faster read access to the actual device will make editing and timeline performance a lot smoother. There's other use cases for like high speed network attached storage. And basically, uh, the reason why most people want to do this is to flex, right? Because you can. But Overall, running this in RAID 0 is fine, uh, probably not stable over time. And now I did talk to Sabrent about this, and they said a lot of their users had problems getting these to run in RAID 0 at all. I had no problems getting this to work, so I can confirm that with these Rocket Gen 4 drives, you can put them in RAID 0 without any problems. It's uh, most likely uh, configuration errors and actually getting it to work. The most likely issue that people are having with this setup is that pre-installation driver before you install Windows. So I can guarantee you most people who are trying to do this are having driver issues and not realizing that a clean install is the recommended way to do this. It's the way I would recommend doing it as well. Now, as for portability with a setup like this, it's not very portable. You can't just plug this card into another motherboard and think it's gonna run in RAID 0 because there's no physical controller. All the controller activities and all the caching and everything has been done by the motherboard and the chipset and nothing on the card itself. The card is basically a dumb device 
that is splitting out the PCIe lanes and that's basically the gist of it. Now, uh, I would actually like to get my hands on a card that has a built-in RAID controller because something like that would be a lot more portable because the RAID controller is on the card, the memory is on the card, the cache is all on card, you can plug it between systems. You wouldn't actually need a driver for this to work in this in this instance if you were to have a RAID version of this card. But yeah, so a lot of these cards that you're seeing as uh, RAID cards, they're just dumb cards where you need to use the AMD drivers and the AMD RAID to get it to work. There's no logic inside of these boards at all. Now, you can actually control fan speeds with cards like this as well. Uh, there's a little application that ASRock makes for these cards to make them quieter. There's a few switches on the board too to run it at half speed. The software for the ASRock card actually does work with like my Gigabyte TRX40 board and an MSI one that I've got as well. So I had no problems with that at all. So if you were to pick up one of these cards to use with another board like, at, like MSI or or Gigabyte or ASUS or whatever, you would actually have no problems actually getting this to work. It's basically all in the BIOS. There's nothing to do with any type of vendor locking between manufacturers at all. But yeah, I think it's uh, a, a pretty interesting solution. It's not for everybody, but to be fair, I just wanted to test out how fast we could make this thing go. And yeah, it's it's very, very fast. And I hope you, you learnt a little something from this because it is quite interesting for me because I'm into storage and I do like to share some things. And that's basically the meat and potatoes of it. And if you guys like this video, like this, like this, <laughs> hit the like button. Is that how this works? If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. And if you want to get early access, the video is just like this one. Uh, head on over to Float Plane. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And again, I, I just want to say this as well, not again, but this video is not sponsored by Sabrent. I basically just asked them to send us a bunch of drives so I could test this out because they were telling me that people were having some problems with getting this to work. And I wanted to show that it does actually work. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.